Hey guys, welcome to the final part of the uh, Pong video series. In this video, we're going to um, build the rooms, so basically put our objects into our rooms, uh, do a little bit, a little bit more coding just to get the rooms to work, and then uh, finally we'll see if the game works. Um, so let's start by building the rooms. So I know that my menu is ready. Um, I've already set it up properly. I've put the two objects in, pl player one button, player two button, everything is good. Now there's one more thing I need to do with the menu, um, just because of the way I kind of imagine this game logic to work. It makes sense for us to use the menu to reset our scores. Um, and so this is something that you can use rooms for. It's not, it's not the best way of doing it, but for a small project like this, it works great. Uh, we can use rooms to run some creation code. Uh, so this is code that gets run when the room is created. And we know that the main menu is created when we go into the game. When we first load it, this room gets loaded and this creation code runs. Um, also, this is why we, um, when we, when you press the enter key on the game over screen and it says game underscore restart, like it completely restarts the game. The reason for that is so that it takes you back to the main um, room that we first started in and it um, runs this code again to reset the scores. So the way you do that, once again, let me show you again. Select the room, and then down here there's a button in the bottom bottom left corner called Creation Code. And in this area here, I'm just going to type global dot player one score equals zero, and global dot player two score equals zero. And that's it. Um, another thing you could add in this um, section of the code here is if you wanted to play some music in your game, this would be the perfect place to start the music. Um, you could put a line of code in here to audio play sound, you know, pass in a sound file and play the music. Um, you might also want to stop all sounds before you do this, just in case um, some song might be playing from before. Okay, so that's the menu. Let's move on to the single player room. So the single player room, we need to, as I said, we need to put paddle, play run paddle on the right hand side. So player one paddle. All I'm doing is I've, I need to select the instances layer. I'm actually gonna set the um, grid. So you can change the grid by clicking this dot, drop down menu. I'm gonna change it to be 16 by 16. It just gives me more um, freedom on where I wanna place my objects. You could set it to one and one and then you have complete freedom. Um, but I'm gonna drag this in. And this is also only if you're using the snap feature. You don't have to use the snap feature. Um, oh yeah, I did do something um, when I was not recording. I went back and I put a little curve on my paddles on the two sides. This, I think, just allows me to maybe have a bit more control on how I want the ball to bounce off my paddle. So bouncing off the middle, it'll always have a perfect reflection, but um, if it bounces off the edges, you can kind of change the direction where it bounces. So let's go back to the room. So obviously this paddle is facing the wrong way. What you can do is you can double click it. And when you double click it, you can you have some options here. You can change the color of it. You guys are welcome to do that. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna flip the X. So that flips it on the X axis. So now it's facing the right way. Okay. And uh, actually here's something uh, interesting that I just noticed. If you double click it, you're also able to change what frame it's currently on. So Going back to our uh, menu buttons, I could have easily used this feature instead of trying to use the create code um, or create event. I could have just set this to one. Um, but that's the player um, one, and it's going to be playing as the computer. So I need to grab my paddle CPU, drag that to the other side. I think they're kind of in the middle. Let's just move up one. Perfect. <clears throat> I need to place the two scores in here. So player one score, I'm gonna place somewhere around here. Player two score, somewhere maybe here. You can always count to make sure you've got the right distance. So one, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to move this over one. Perfect. And then last thing I need is of course the game controller. If there's no game controller, no ball's gonna spawn and I'm not gonna switch rooms. So game controller, I'm throwing in the top left corner. Um, the game controller doesn't draw anything or it has no graphics, so it doesn't matter where you drop it in the room. Um, so I think that's it. So that's for the single player room. Multiplayer room is gonna be very similar. Let's set this to 16 and 16 again. 
there we go. Let's drop the scores in. So, oops. Once again, make sure you've got the instances layer selected. Each layer has its own setting for its grid. So that's why I have to change it again. So instances, player one score. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put this here. Player two score. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Um, game controller, corner of the room. This time I'm going to be using a paddle player. Nope, not that one. Where is it? Object paddle player two. Put it here. Object paddle player one. Put it across from it. Flip it on the x-axis. And I think that's it. So I've got both of these rooms set up. Last room I have to do is the game over room. So game over room, it's only going to show one message. It doesn't need any assets or anything like that. I simply need to just grab the game over object. Once again, select the right layer instances and put the game over object in the very middle. I think that might be, that's not the middle. I know it's not the middle because it was not the middle before. 16 and 16, that's probably the middle. Yeah, 400 and 288. Do I go down a little bit? Somewhere there. That's good. Um, I think with that I have everything. Um, let's test the game, so I'm going to press play. Now you find out if there's any errors. So here's the game. I can click left and right to switch between the two uh, selections. Press enter. Okay, so I've got an error. It says that um, my player's uh, my player one score display object is looking for an f GUI um, variable, but that variable has not been set. So it's try trying to use it, but it doesn't exist. Okay, and of course it doesn't exist because I did not make a font for it. So I need to go over into my fonts, right click, create font over here. I need to call it the same thing. So f lowercase f and then GUI capital letters. I want this to be kind of like old school. So I know there's a font that you can use for that. It is called um, Consolas, Consolas. And I want to make it a little bit bigger, let's say 30. Sure, let's try 30. And no anti-lacing. I want it to be very old school. Perfect. Let's run the project again. Here we go. I can <clears throat> switch players. Press enter. And there we go. And you can see the computer players following it. It's playing Pong against me. I'm gonna let it beat me. I wanna see what happens. There you saw that it hit the corner of the paddle and it redirected it. Okay, something is broken. Um, Let's see what's happening. So it should have taken me to a different room, but it did not. So that's of course because the game controller is not checking to see if the score has reached um, higher than four. So let's go back to the game controller. I'm just gonna close my rooms so that, there we go, we got more space. So yeah, so I got more than five points, yet I didn't win the game or the computer didn't win the game. So the game controller was not checking for points. So we need to do a quick check for points. So um, all we have to do is check, we can check either for player one score or player two score. So you can go if um, global dot player one score is greater than four or global dot player two score is greater than four. Um, then we wanna go to room underscore go to um, room. Nope, it's not called win, it's called room game over. One of the ways I know for sure what variables are called 
and if and, and I know if I did something incorrectly is because if I type a variable where I where I accept I expect it to be one that exists, it should turn red. Um, sorry, this is a variable that's referring to a resource. So if it's a variable that refers to a resource and it doesn't turn red, that means I've either misspelled it or it doesn't exist. Um, so there we go. So that takes care of that. I also noticed another thing, which was when the ball um, went out of bounds, it should have made a sound, but it did not. So let's go here. Um, yes, so in outside room, the ball should be making a sound. So that sound should be um, audio play sound. I already have the sound file selected for it. Sound point 100 and false. We don't want it to repeat. Perfect. So now when the ball goes outside the room, which only happens when it hits the left or right side of the screen, um, of course, it gives each player, if it's the left hand side, it gives player one a point. If it's the right hand side, it gives player two a point. It plays the sound, starts the countdown timer in the uh, game controller, and then destroys itself. So let's try it one last time. There we go. Let's try one player. Perfect. So now it's making a sound. I'm going to let the computer beat me fair and square. There we go. There you go. Player two wins. Press enter to quit. I press enter. It goes back to the main menu. Let's try player two player mode. So if I select two player mode, I can. This is the arrow keys, and this is the W and S key. So the game works perfectly. Okay. So that is Pong. There's just lots more that can be done with this. You could add music. You can make it four player Pong. You know, have paddles on the top and the bottom. It's, it's, uh, you'd have to think a little bit about what direction you're going to be uh, changing. So it's going to be the X direction instead of the Y direction. You could even put paddles at an angle. That takes a bit more uh, uh, math to figure out how to do that. Uh, what else could we do? You could spawn obstacles in there to make the game harder. You could spawn multiple balls at the same time. Um, yeah, there's lots of cool things you guys could do. But this is the game. It is working. It's done. Um, please go ahead and build it. Try to experiment. Do some more cool things with it. And I hope to see your projects um, when you hand them in. Thanks for watching.